A couple of weeks ago, we first discussed the first automatic calculating machine ever invented, Charles Babbage's Difference Engine. Although never completed until 2002, the Difference Engine was incredibly powerful. However, if we were to compare the Difference Engine with our modern technology, it would only be a simple calculator used to add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers. Calculators today are bought and sold in dollar stores, and even those expensive ones with all the fancy features struggle to compare to our modern smartphones and laptops. Therefore, Charles Babbage had to conquer the next big thing, the world's first general purpose computer. The Difference Engine project had largely failed by 1833, but in 1834, Charles Babbage was on to his next invention, the analytical engine. Many today like to say that the analytical engine was the world's very first computer, but if you are a sharp subscriber to my channel, actually subscribe on YouTube and hit the bell icon, then you'll recall that that's not completely accurate. I would say, based on my research, that the Antithica mechanism discussed months ago is the world's first computer. Click the card up here to learn more about that. But this difference in semantics does, does little to demean the importance and the sheer power of the analytical engine. As I mentioned a few weeks ago in my video on the difference engine, Charles Babbage wasn't one to back down from a challenge. In fact, he loved challenges. So even when the Difference Engine project failed, Charles Babbage dreamed up an even more complex, powerful, and ambitious engine. The analytical engine was to be fully autonomous from start to finish, be constructed from over 12,000 individual mechanical parts weigh over 15 tons, and be about the size of a small steam locomotive. And, speaking of steam, the machine was to be run by a steam engine, meaning that a human operator no longer had to turn a crank like the difference engine. However, what's more amazing about the analytical engine is its similarity to our modern computers. Without diving too far or going off into the weeds on the complexity of our technology, smartphones, smart devices, laptops, and desktops included, computers require four main elements to work. First, they need a method of input. For our modern computers, that's a keyboard, a mouse, maybe a touchscreen. They also need a method of output, so maybe the monitor or the screen, or perhaps a printer. Then they need a central processing unit. Today, this is called a CPU. They also need some short-term memory. Again, today, this is RAM or random access memory. But every computer needs those basic four elements to operate. And despite being invented in 1834, the analytical engine had every single one of these components. For his first method of input, Babbage borrowed the punch cards from the Jacquard loom, discussed a couple weeks ago. In fact, unlike the Jacquard loom, the analytical engine used four different types of cards in order to input instructions into the analytical engine. This was an early computer program. Number cards were used to enter the exact numbers that would be used in the calculation, maybe two or four or 500, those numbers. Variable cards told the analytical engine where to put the numbers. They essentially made an address where the analytical engine knew to find the numbers. Operation cards told the analytical engine which operation to carry out, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, etc. And finally, combinatorial cards told the analytical engine how to use the operation and variable cards. For example, when you wanted to add 2 plus 2, rather than continually feeding different number cards and different variable cards and different operation cards, it would simply tell the analytical engine to back up and repeat the last couple cards in order to repeat 2 plus 2. 
All four of these operations and cars that the analytical engine used are all operations in our modern computer. Our modern computers carry out numbers, addresses, where they're stored, where they're supposed to be calculated, how they're supposed to be calculated. All four of those cars are carried out in our modern computer, albeit much, much more quickly and completely invisible to the computer's user. But they're all there. Similar to the difference engine, the method of output used on the analytical engine was a small printing press. First, it would stamp the result on a small roll of paper like a receipt. Then, it would also stamp the result in a soft clay-like material, maybe like plaster of Paris, that would be used to form lead molds for a stereotype to be used in a printing press, so the calculation could be repeated and printed over and over and over again without introducing any source of error. And just like your computer or your cell phone, the analytical engine had a central processing unit, or CPU. Today, CPUs are mainly made by Intel or AMD, if that helps you think about what they are. You've probably seen Intel or AMD names around or commercials. Here, a series of barrels, gears, and columns. It took the numbers from where they were stored and put them into registers just like CPUs today. That's actually what they're called, registers, the memory parts of a CPU. And then that's where the main calculation would happen. That's where it added, divided, and did anything else to the numbers that it needed to do. Once the calculation was completed, the new number would be stored in the register if it was going to be used right away. Or it would be sent back to the memory storage, where it could be later recalled. Or if the calculation was done, it sent it to the printing press to show the human user the final calculation. And now that final element, the short-term memory. Today, it's called RAM, or random access memory. Similar to like a USB drive, it's really fast and is used for that short-term memory. As soon as you turn off your computer, any memory stored there is lost. On the analytical engine, Babbage called his short-term memory the store. As soon as punch cards read numbers, it would put them in the store and give them an address, so the mill, the CPU, would know where to find them. Here in the store, the analytical engine could store over 1,050 digit numbers that would be used in various ways by the mill and the analytical engine. The analytical engine is an extraordinary piece of mechanical engineering, especially given that it replicates our modern computers in many ways. Given its remarkable similarities to our modern computers, I'm a little curious to compare it to our modern computers. How does its speeds and size compare? Well, thankfully, the BBC did just that in 2011. The memory, that short-term memory in the store for the analytical engine, today called RAM, was able to store about 675 bytes of data. The average smartphone today, an iPhone, can store over 4 billion bytes of data. Computers also measure their speed in clock cycles, so a cycle. How many cycles can be completed in one second? The analytical engine had a speed of 7 hertz. We use hertz to measure those clock cycles. And given its mechanical construction, 7 hertz was very fast at the time. However, the average smartphone, again, that iPhone I looked up, operates at a speed of 2 billion 100 million hertz. Today, our computers run so fast and store so much, we no longer use the term bytes and hertz. We actually use the term megahertz or gigahertz for the speeds of a computer and gigabytes or terabytes for the size of a computer. Unfortunately, given the funds and the failure of the Difference Engine project, the British government wasn't thrilled to fund another of Babbage's crazy dreams. Therefore, the analytical engine was never actually constructed. Charles Babbage died in 1871, and his beloved analytical engine only existed in drawings and a few small demonstration models. However, like the Difference Engine, there were many researchers, scientists, and engineers across the world that wondered, would the device, would the analytical engine actually function if it were actually built? Well, 
In 2011, a team of researchers, along with the help of the Science Museum of London, decided to see if they could put the device to the test. They began to digitize over 5,000 of Charles Babbage's original detailed drawings on the analytical engine. They distributed these designs worldwide. Their goal was to create a computer simulation of the analytical engine to demonstrate its effectiveness and see if it was even worth building. They plan to complete a physical analytical engine by 2021, in time for the 150th anniversary of Charles Babbage's death. Unfortunately though, as I did this research, I found little on the current state of the project. Plan28.org, which looks like the official website for the project, seems to indicate that the project has been delayed. Nothing physically appears to have been built as of this recording in June 2020. However, it looks like they're still working hard, so this will be an exciting project to watch. Hopefully someday we'll actually be able to see the analytical engine operate. If you'd like to keep apprised and up to date on this project, visit the project's website, plan28.org. A link is down in the description below. The analytical engine was built upon previous technologies, most notably the Jacquard Loom for those punch cards and the difference engine. As we will discuss, make sure to follow me on Medium and subscribe here on YouTube, future technologies will be built upon the analytical engine. Remember, before we could drive around in cars, somebody had to invent the wheel. Today in our culture, there's often a criticism of previous civilizations as being less intelligent or primitive. But that's really a prideful way of thinking. How could we drive around in those cars before the wheel was created? We must never criticize these previous generations and their seemingly lack of innovation and technology as we see it. Without their inventions, without their knowledge and their building upon what they knew, we would be much, much further from our modern computers. The analytical engine is the 15th major milestone in the history of computing. And that is the great, 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 great grandfather of your iPhone, the analytical engine. Babbage has certainly earned his title as one of the first, if not the first, computer pioneer. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Remember, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, big red button down below, and hit the bell icon so that you will never miss a video. If you have subscribed, please consider sharing this video or your favorite video from my channel with your friends. That's the only way I'm going to grow this channel is you, my loyal subscribers, sharing my videos with your friends. Remember to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Medium. I'm active daily, publishing new content about technology that you're never going to see here on YouTube, so follow me over there. Also, remember and read today's Medium blog. I'm a publisher and writer on Medium with my own publication, so I invite you to follow me on Medium and follow my publication, Tech is a Tool. All of those links are in the description down below. There might be some unique content over there on Medium, so make sure that you subscribe on YouTube and follow on Medium so that you never miss any content that I publish. We'll be back next week with an important invention in the communication of our world. Click over here for another video on the history of computing for my channel or click over here for just another tech video for my channel as recommended by YouTube. See you guys next week. Bye!